All right, you're looking at a simple Unreal Engine level that's getting data from uh, the ZMAX headband. This cylinder right here is controlled by the amount of sound. So you can see it moves if I speak. The ball right here, that's controlled uh, by my PPG. So if I stop talking for a moment, you will see that it gives the heart rate. Then this uh, cube here, that's the orientation of the head from the accelerometer. So it's moving with my head. And finally, uh, these grooves here, that's uh, the EEG uh, signal. That's a Fourier transform of the EEG signal. This is a little bit more put together to look cool, not really for being able to determine what the EEG is saying. So I'm just gonna clench my uh, teeth to show you how it changes. So that's all the high frequency from uh, from the teeth. Uh, let's see if I can get this area right here to move with the eye movements. Right, because that, that's a high frequency. So if you want to see it better, you can restrict it. And we lost the material for some reason. This is without the EEG signal, and this is with. So how is this working? Just go to. A well, first of all, there's a plugin. The Zmax plugin, which allows you to then drop a Zmax actor into the level, that has the port and the IP address where it has to connect to and then I just use the level bl blueprint which does the following things uh, begin play it connects and that's it it prints a debug string end play it disconnects then it's getting um, data from the ZMAX actor for example, if I want to drag something away from that. These are all the sensors. And for the EEG, you can get the value or you can get the Fourier transform as an array. And so then these things are just connected to uh, transforms of these objects. And the... Uh, the Fourier transform is actually the it's a s moving spectrogram that's being put on a texture. So it's just a texture 2D that's exposed by the actor. So the blueprint is just creating a material instance, putting the... Let's see, is it doing it there or here? Yeah, here it's putting the dynamic texture into the texture input parameter so that then that material has that texture. And then it's... Uh, it's refreshing it. So that's pretty much the effect if you want to see changes to the material. Now we got this uh, strange grid. I can remove that and remove also the 3D because I'm using the spectrogram also as a uh, height map. So now I'm going to apply it only to the color and see what happens. What happens if perhaps the light is not strong enough? No. And something else happened. Why is it so dark? Well, I remove the metallic. Oh, I know why it's dark, because I have to play it, otherwise there's no color. There we go. So I'll try with the teeth again. That's the easiest thing to see. And the eye movements. Shown here. But if I close my eyes and relax for a second, you see these numbers, that's a 10, her 10 hertz range. You will see a line there. Even clearer line is if I touch the USB cable, then we're going to get a line at the 50 hertz uh, spot. See if that happens. 
it's hot and I'm sweating, so it seems like it's a... Uh, the electrodes are working too good. I can't even see the interference from the line noise. If I make it a little bit wet. Wasn't able to see that if I restrict it. Anyway, this is a normal spectrogram, more normal. So you can imagine that you can band pass filter this and then apply that value uh, towards pretty much anything. In fact, I had something related to that that I commented out. Let's see if I can... I'm not sure if that's still gonna work, but we can try. No? I've messed around too much. I mean, you have, you have the FFT frequencies also in bins. So here what I was doing is just create an instance of some cubes, make a I don't know if it's 256 of them and then adjust the height based on the FFT bins. So there's, there's a lot still to be done, but already you can get out all the signals and you can put them into the, into the level. Now, of course, if you have a, wait a second, why is it not doing that? Well, there's no point in showing it, but the, it's it's ready for VR as well. You can you can insert it in VR very easily. Uh, you just have to have Steam VR running before you launch the level. So I actually went into the into the level here with the grid in VR it was a little bit traumatic. <laughs> I think that was supposed to go into the emissive, and this was going to go into the world position offset, and that should. Perhaps put it back the way it was. Let's see. So I'm not sure if this can be used for gaming because it's really just biological science, but for biofeedback, meditation, and that kind of stuff. Because uh, I'm sure you can imagine you can you know, create a Buddhist temple and some flames and everything is responding. Another good thing to, to get the level to respond to is your breathing. So I don't have the breathing sensor connected right now. But uh, one of the things that I didn't really expect is that ZMAX is actually thin enough that it can go under the VR visor. And so it's really actually not a problem to... Um, it's too bright now. It's not a problem to actually keep it under the, uh, the the VR screen. Now, is it super comfortable? No, but I mean, it's not terribly more dis uh, more uncomfortable than just having uh, the the screen itself. I'm not sure why it's still still got that emissive. Did I save it? I think I did. Yeah, something like this maybe. Yeah, so anyway, it's actually thin enough that it can go under the VR visor and then you can pretty much forget it's there. Um, if there's enough demand, I can even create a different electrode patch that's going to be even thinner. At that point, it's just not going to intrude anymore. But even the way it is right now, it's, uh, it's already pretty tolerable. Uh, I didn't expect it really. I thought it would... Uh, I mean, it leaks just a little bit of light but it's, I mean, just turn off the lights in your room and it's fine. Even the nasal sensor actually fits under the VR goggles with no problems. So you can get breathing uh, as well. So I might do a few more demos in the future, uh, get some proper assets instead of this uh, synth wave extravaganza that I've got here. But uh, yeah, that's, that's all for today.